Hello and welcome to lesson 4 of our study of mathematical biology. So in this video we'll be talking about the final size relation for the SIR model without vital dynamics. So recall from our previous videos that these are the three equations, differential equations we obtained from the SIR model without vital dynamics. Okay, so we are going to derive the final size relation for it. So the first thing that we do is that we take equation one and equation two and we add them. So equation one plus equation two will give you what we the equation we have here. Okay, so this and this goes away. And now we have DDT S plus I equals negative gamma I. Right? Then we can multiply true by dt. And this true by dt. So this cancels this. And this gives us d x plus i will equals negative gamma i dt. <coughs> so when we get here then you know x is a function of t and i is a function of t. So we can do that and we see this. And here to i is a function of t. So that's what you can see here. So when we get here, then what we do is that we integrate the terms on both sides from zero. That's the beginning of the outbreak to infinity. That's the end of the outbreak. And this yields limit as m approaches infinity, zero to m. You know, when we introduce um, the infinity here, we have improper integrals, right? So we have to let a certain value, let's say m, approach that. So we can write that m here instead of the infinity. So that gives us this. And here too we have that, okay? All right. <coughs> so when we integrate this, we have SRT plus I of T. Then let me transfer from zero to m. Then saying gamma is a constant, we can bring it outside. And we have this. Then when you put in our limit of integration here, we have s of m plus i of m minus s of 0 minus i of 0 is equal to the right-hand side. So expand the left-hand side gives us, so we take the limit true, and we have something like that. So, you know, this S naught here and this I naught here, they are constants. And one thing that you should notice is that the limit of a constant is the constant itself, okay? So that means limit as M approaches infinity, S of zero, is the same as S of zero, which is S naught. So limit as M approaches infinity of I of zero also be I naught. And at the end of the epidemic, you know, the number of susceptible remaining will be giving us S infinity, and the infectives will be almost zero. So we represent that with zero. So making that substitution, we are going to have S at infinity plus zero minus S naught minus I naught equals the right hand side. Okay, then this is the same as s as infinity minus i naught plus s naught. We just decided to bring them together. Then we still have the right hand side, which we've not touched. But note that at the start of the epidemic, i naught plus s naught equals n. And this is because even though n is equal to i of t plus s of t plus r of t. So at the start of the epidemic, t is always equal to zero. So you have n will be equal to i of zero plus s of zero plus r of zero. So this is represented by, i of zero is represented by i naught, s of zero, s naught, then this is zero. So that means n is equal to i naught plus s naught, okay. So 
we can make that substitution here and we have n here. So what we do is that we divide you by negative gamma. So when we do the division, that gives us this equation here. Then you know this is the same as the left hand side is the same as s at infinity minus gamma, then minus n over minus gamma. So this part becomes positive. So we rewrite it with the positive part coming first. Okay. So we finally get something of this form. And we name this equation A. Okay, so let's take note of our equation A. So from equation one, we have this, right? So what we do is that we do separation of variables. So we divide you by S, multiply you by DT. And that gives us this equation here. So the next thing we do is that we integrate the terms on both sides from zero to infinity. That's from the beginning of the epidemic to the end of the epidemic. And that will give us what we can find here. So you should know that the limit as m approaches infinity is coming because we can't use infinity directly because it's an improper integral. Okay. So when we integrate 1 over s, that gives us ln s of t. Then saying beta is um, negative beta is a constant, we can bring that one outside. So when we put in our limit of integration, we get this here. Then we still maintain the right hand side. And when we expand the limit through, we get this. We still maintain our right hand side. And we know the limit as it approaches infinity of this will give us ln s at infinity. So we've already shown why it is so. And this will give us ln s naught. And this will be equal to minus beta limit as m approaches infinity integral from 0 to m i of s ds. That's the right hand side. So the next thing we do is that we divide through by negative beta. <coughs> so doing that gives us this. OK. Then when we change the array arrangement, OK, because this negative, this negative, we are going to have ln s naught minus ln s infinity over beta. Then this is equal to what we can find here. OK. So after, after doing that, we name this equation B. So we then compare equation A and equation B. So you realize that this part of equation B is the same as this part of equation A. OK. So making comparison, then we can say that this is equal to that. All right. But we know that. The arrow naught, we proved that in our previous video. The basic reproductive number arrow naught is given by beta n over gamma. So arrow naught over n, when you, when you decide to divide you by n, will give us beta over gamma, all right? So when you multiply um, true by beta, right? We are going to get b2 over gamma n minus s at infinity is equal to ln s naught over s infinity. But now this b2 over gamma is what we can find here to be r naught over n. So making that substitution is going to give us r naught over n, n minus s at infinity will be equal to ln s naught over s at infinity. Okay. So when you multiply it by the 1 over n, we get r naught, then n over n minus s at infinity over n, all over ln s naught over s infinity. So this cancels this for us to get 1, then the rest holds. So this equation D is what we call the final size relation, OK? So that's how to derive the formula for the final size relation. 
And this is very, very important. We can use it to compute the basic reproductive number, R0, when we know the total population, the initial number of susceptibles, and those who remain um, after the epidemic ended, all right? So um, thank you very much. And in our next video, we'll be solving some questions and that's what we've discussed so far. Thank you and all the best. See you in the next video.